And here we go. This is Flash at 20% off Thursday night, the 20th of June, 2019. We managed to make it to summer. So far, so good. Thanks a lot, Grim, for the uh, little help earlier before the show and all that. Time will tell if I can figure out how to do it sooner or later. Anyway, going to say hi to the bots and bodies that we're holding, I guess, hostage tonight, today, this afternoon. Now, some people are at work. They're just logged in. We have some loyal RLMers. I think the uh, smaller chat rooms are like that. People just log in and stay logged in. And then not seeing them logged in is when something's wrong. <laughs> I do a show when everybody's asleep, so it's, it's funny as hell. Anyway. For your entertainment today, we have Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, DC Brackets, Anti Asmo Chalcedony, without the O, IB Don C, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Rome's Van White, Vinny Atlas, <laughs> Weather Dork, Z Beth Z. Phantom, Cyborg Noodle, Me, Frumpy, Gromit, I Wish You, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Sock Puppet, Smataz, Specialed, and Van Meter out in Florida. And that's the bots and the bodies you got to play with today on the chat. So... If you're in a mood and you feel like typing, that's the thing to do. Get yourself a name and get in there and tell Beetle how to fix it. He likes help. <laughs> he loves it when you tell him what to do. Huh, Beetle? And, yep, this is 20% off and I'm Flash. And tonight, I think I'm going to read some link here in a minute. But uh, it's been an uneventful Two days since the last time I picked up the microphone to report <laughs> the exciting things that don't go on here in Freddy Town. But, you know, geez, I think it's paradise to be left alone and have it quiet. And once upon a time, I lived right in the middle of shit and couldn't wait for the next uh, extravaganza to hit the airwaves. So I guess... Uh, I got lucky to get to be old enough to appreciate a little slowdown. Hmm. And tonight, Cirque is coming home a little bit late from the city. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> working, working, working. But she didn't have to work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because she was home. She wasn't feeling too good. Hey, Don and Van Meter, you're fucking very welcome. You renegade from somewhere in the west to somewhere in the other side to wherever you're at. But Florida, ah, it's just a place. You know, it's people are the people you surround yourself with is what matters way above where you live or what kind of government you have and all that kind of shit. And I was telling Grim before the show tonight, my Iranian friend down at the train station kiosk we were discussing this just I think yesterday and he doesn't expect the u.s and iran to conflict and go to war and i do but he doesn't and his uh, explanation of it that i could really make sense of was he doesn't think the americans are that crazy because it's never been done they've never attacked anybody else but they've been attacked from iraq and Iraqis right next door to them. They can't beat them. They can't push them back. So, hmm. good luck, Mr. Trump, with your latest financially, you know, successful war adventure for the Americans to enjoy. Hmm. I believe there's a, a percentage of people out there that are actually rooting this on as though it were a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Beetle, you can fix anything. Why? Why can't I say that? 
doesn't mean it's true. This is radio. I can say whatever makes me happy. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I do look for the better stuff when I when I give it some thought. Not everybody is mean and rotten. Nah, there's a lot of nice people on the RLM chat. Hmm. Maybe they don't get enough attention because, you know, we're all stepping all over each other when we talk. <laughs> Everybody's being one funnier than the last fucker was. And putting up a better song than the last person put up. A very competitive, verbal kind of thing. Yeah. All in fun, but still. <laughs> Hard to keep track of. I can imagine if you uh, were slow-witted like me, then you would find some of the chat. you got to think about it a little bit before you uh, can make sense of what it's got to do with because there's four people writing about four different things at times because they're not typed in order. They're typed by whoever typed it fastest, like trivia. Anyway. I've got a special link for you guys tonight. You're going to go, oh, man, he's on one of those bashing America things. Hmm. Well, I think, personally, I bash Israel just as hard as I bash America. And I bash Denmark and Canada, Israel, all those other places, those state places. But at the point that I'm at today... Ladies and gentlemen of the radio world out there in radio land, <clears throat> I'm actually living on the dirt of a country that doesn't have a sit-in government in power at the moment. Because uh, the way their parliament is set up, they still need a majority of the groups there are <laughs> to decide what they're going to do. And there's so many freaking groups, it's it's a, it's a lot harder to pull off than when you got two choices. These folks, they got 14 choices. <laughs> and they got to get people from all those different 14 choices to basically get a majority of them to agree on something. And wow, let's hope it takes them a couple of years. With any luck, there won't, you know, <laughs> there won't be any sit in government and shit will just be okay. But it just goes down to show that it's really all about commerce. Uh-oh. Yeah, Vinny Atlas. <laughs> he says he's handsomely handy. We're going to put Vinny to work out in the back 40. Bessie the cow's looking a bit lonely tonight. <laughs> Go make her smile, Vinny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get off the pleasantries and... Uh, let me stall one more second. I think my wife's saying something to me. Ah, hey, sweetie. <clears throat> and now I'm going to find my epic story for your listening entertainment this evening on 20% off. Brought to you by the good folks at reallibertymedia.com. <laughs> here, let me make a copy of this little baby I'm planning to read here. I know, copy and paste. Whoa, look at this. I got the both steps down. It's a monarchy. I know it's a monarchy, but the people. Oddly enough, i never seen a place where uh, the population can really bring the government's attention to them and demand things and get them. And these folks have rioted. They rioted in the 90s when Cirque was younger. I got to find out about all that. And when I lived in Copenhagen, I got to see all the buildings and she'd tell me the history of, hey, this is what went on here. And we would sit in the damn, just the ruins of this shit, smoking a cigarette and her giving me my history lesson on Copenhagen. And a lot of it stuck. I remember the, I, I've got not, not perfect memory or any of that, but I've still got memory of being there and where we were and how I could get my way around if I was down there at well, just come back to me it's not it, i'm like if you take me away from a place for years but then bring me back to it i find my way around like i never left it it's a very strange gift to have but uh i haven't been to copenhagen in i think four and a half years don't plan to go back just soon not um think this where i'm at's fine fuck it what with the world in the state it's in why go out there looking for shit you know it's like eh I'm 
too old to be bothered. And what I've got for your reading and listening interest tonight is a shocking list of official proven false flag attacks. <laughs> wonder how many of these will have Israel stamped on them too, but I didn't read it first. What I did was I did the craziest damn thing. I picked an idea and I just opened a link and I'm like, I'll read that. <laughs> so, here we go with shocking list of official proven false flag attempts, attacks. February 2nd, 201 and 5 from conspiracies, I guess it says here. And it starts out, a false flag attack is a covert operation designed to deceive so that it appears as though it has been carried out by entities, groups, or nations other than those who actually planned and executed it. Governments from around the world admit they've used false flag attacks. It's common practice. Below is a list of proven false flag attacks of the past. Ooh, this list may help people realize what governments are capable of doing. Block number one. Japanese troops set off a small explosion on a train track in 1931 and falsely blamed it on China in order to justify an invasion of Manchuria. This is known as the Mukden Incident or the Manchurian Incident. The Tokyo International Military Tribunal found several of the part participators in the plan, including Hashimoto, a high-ranking Japanese army officer, have on various occasions admitted their part in the plot and have stated that the object of the incident was to afford an excuse for the occupation of Manchuria by Kwantung Army. Wow, see? America's not the only ones that do it. Come on, it's just the only language I know. I haven't learned how to speak Japanese yet. Mm. Let's get on back to the story. Why I see a major with the Nazi SS admitted to the Nuremberg trials that, under orders from the chief of the Gestapo, he and some other Nazi operatives faked attacks on their own people and resources which they blamed on the Poles to justify the invasion of Poland. Nazi General Franz Halder also testified at the Nuremberg trials that Nazi leader Hermann Göring <laughs> admitted to setting fire to the German Parliament building in 1933 and then falsely blaming the communists for the arson. Wow, see? Yeah, you guys thought you were the only ones that could do it. Wow, this is more like a history lesson than an American slapping. So, I'm sure y'all be in there. Don't get all excited and depressed. Let me see what's on the chat. Let me take a reading break. Oh, we got Vinny bragging about steak. We got Grimner teasing him about tube steak. <laughs> ah, go... Go to the Heavy Metal Festival? No, I, I'll pass on that. I think they're, have, they're having something here in, in uh, Denmark soon. But no, nah, I'm done. I'm not really interested. In fact, I just happened to see a live band at the pub I go to. I didn't even know they were going to play. And I, I don't care for live music so much. It's, it's almost like a way to hold people back from showing you what they can really do because <laughs> uh, the public's not ready for the stuff that I really appreciate. Anyway, I'll give this here, <laughs> I'll give this here link some more. i give it some more time. And see if it, It's not seeming to interest the crowd on the reallibertymedia.com right now. <laughs> but, hmm. I could skip the Soviet one and jump right into Israel, but I'm not going to. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev admitted in writing that the Soviet Union's Red Army shelled the Russian village of Mainila in 1939 while blaming the attack on Finland 
as a basis for launching the winter war against Finland. Russian President Boris Yeltsin agreed that Russia had been the aggressor in the winter war and Putin. That's all it says, so I don't know what's missing. <laughs> well, we'll leave this to your imagination. Oh, these are like headlinies. See, they're just little blurbs. So wasn't such a great thing to pick, is what it turns out to be. But just it goes to show you that you know the Jews didn't invent. Um, <laughs> they didn't invent false flags, but they sure as hell perfected it with the uh, whatever the 9/11 thing, whatever you want to call that. That was like. The last thing anybody could possibly expect out of their own sitting government is <laughs> something as sinister as attacking your own central uh, financial hub and taking out buildings. And one of the things, like Oklahoma, when they took out Oklahoma City, the whatever Murrow building or something there, well, surprisingly, when they found out that had uh, Hillary's documents in it, yeah. So what? When they got so much crap on Hillary, they could afford to get let her get passed on that one. <laughs> so, so, anyway, so what I'm making fun of is that this building gets bombed. And all the attention for all the time after that was always put on the bomber. Never why it was bombed, never what was connected to it. But like 9-11... You know, the third building that fell, the 47-story building, there was a, what was it, Enron, I think there was, there was an open case. It was huge, 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 huge. Lots of people were going to get hurt. And uh seems that all the documents they needed to prosecute that happened to be in that building that pancaked. And at the time, you know, jet fuel melted them and, Elves from the jet fuel carried, you know, more jet fuel to the other building and burned that one up too. <laughs> and it fell in a fire. <laughs> people bought that. Bro. No, a lot of people still do. <clears throat> I'm not friendly with people over that particular day. They believe the state. The state lies. Now, I don't think I'm lying because I'm looking at the results of what took place. Coming up with an answer about... Who in the right mind would do a thing like that? How Who would it benefit? Well, it sure as fuck benefits people that are in security and, oh, what's that, Blackwater? That Blackwater guy, they're calling him a billionaire now, and he's expanding. I think he wants to join up with the Israelis and perfect killing off the idiots, make money off their cold, dead corpses. Uh, let's see if Mr. Grimner has a little input in my thing tonight. The lesson here, Flash, is that all governments use the same tricks to fuck over their people. Right, and it's always their own people that they're fucking over. But you would think that after a certain amount of ass rapings that one would learn to stay away from Uncle Creepy Toe. Uncle Creepy Toe is going to try to stick his finger in your butt. Don't go no near Uncle Creepy Toe. But what sh history shows us, and I'm only 59, but I've been around and aware of the war situation and the resistance of it from the people compared to the compliance to it that the state shows us it's got when it really doesn't. Most of us don't want that. The people that want it are the people that are employed by it. And as a long-haired hippie pot smoker that spent a credible amount of time in military town, I'm here to tell you those people are tolerant of us, so to speak, but don't talk to them about it. That's not their their version of tolerance is we won't shoot you because you're not one of us. Don't bring it up. Don't stuff your shit down my throat, and I won't do that back to you. <laughs> so we seem to get along pretty good, me and the uh, 
the military and the rednecks and, you know, the people that thought people from L.A. were all strange and all that kind of crap. When, uh, wow, what what it's turned into is weirder than the thing that I left behind. <laughs> but who knows? And I don't know what I said that was funny, Beetle, because the chat, the chat and the radio are timed on different things. And I see Vinny Atlas hanging around in the chat room, entertaining you with his witticisms tonight. Oh, yeah, Vinny. Office furniture burned down Building 7. I'm sure people believe that, too. That They're so uh, unfamiliar with reality, I think. It's, they learn things, you know, but they don't physically try them. <clears throat> you know, take a lump of steel out in your backyard and go get some jet fuel and then try to melt it. Ain't going to work, but... You can have some fun trying. And when you do it, when you're successful, let me know. Because that's how the Twin Towers fell. <laughs> I, I have somebody that, that uh, really got into a disagreement with me. Because I don't believe that's possible. And, <laughs> well, I'm still here. Go figure. I might be the last man standing in the end of that game. We do not know. But I'm getting up there. So, I don't know. There's a few people that are older than me, like Mary. <laughs> Mary's older than me. Wait, but that's about, wait, Mary. Who else? Is there anybody handy? Probably Frumpy. <laughs> Frumpy, are you a dirty old man in disguise? What? 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 Anyway, hold on. Let me let me finish this to you off real quick, folks. Thank you for your patience during the podcast. But that last link, it was kind of predictable what it was going to say. Just name a different country. and Yeah, and it did these horrible fucking things to its own people so that bankers could get the people in war. And that's what we've really got. There's the bottom line of all this. And they've sold it through history. Attacking their self. Everybody's done it. Then blaming the other guy. And you got to remember, you know, when I was living uh, as a grown up teenager or whatnot, how would I know if something was really happening far, far away or if it wasn't? You know, if the grown ups said it was happening, I guess that was good enough for me. It wasn't like I was going to go over there and find out myself. So I think that little bit of indoctrination that I talk about all the time. That I've got still there. Maybe I just got a better grip on it than well. I might not be able, able to explain it to other folk in a sense that they would understand because it's such a hmm, such a subjective thing to live in a like a free way, so to speak, in this crying out loud this freaking world of documents and computers and show me the papers and what's your password and all these little traps that we've laid for ourselves, you know, so we can enjoy our freedom. <laughs> Yet, uh, wait a minute. Let me see your, your ID. Let me see your bank book. Let me see this. It's always some document that you represent by owning it or something. I don't really know how to explain that. But, to me, that it's only as real as I want it to be. So if I want to participate in it, I must then take the necessary steps, do the paperwork, just like getting a passport. I managed to do that because the you know you follow the directions and you do what the the directions say, which was what Grim was doing with me for uh, before the show is showing me another step of the prodca- of the podcast. Uh, production system so that if I want to do this on my own all I gotta do is just learn the steps on the sheet and do them and he's gonna show me what I'll get out of it but right now we were just going through the he was kind of building me an idiot proof way to do it so I can't screw it up as long as I follow the directions that are written 
And that's how my brain seems to work. If I, if I do something in repetition the same way over and over, eventually I just get used to doing it so I can do it. So there's things about the uh, the internet that are simple to me, but not the typing and you know the coding and the directing and all that kind of stuff. I get a little, I guess, overwhelmed. It's too much shit for me. I'm too simple for all that. And then now I'm trying to find some other topic other than the, what I originally thought of because it was just disappointing the shit out of me. So I'm going to go with, let's go with defining your state of reality because uh, we all got one and we got one we share and we got our own. And I have a hell of a time trying to talk about this with people Woo! because, uh, <coughs> excuse me, like, um, Take it. Take Trump as the president. There's a great example, because there's nothing about Trump being the president of the states that affects me in any freaking way, shape, or form. What Trump is is to me the front man for this other group that tells him what to do, and it, it kind of shows itself in it. He makes all these landmark decisions and appoints this person to do that and. How does he know who he's appointing to what? Is he that freaking close to everybody that he encounters? Thought he was the president. Thought he was above all these other people, these little low-life people. They can't get near him without you know, approval and clearance and security and all that shit. And, but apparently, Trump just walks around without any Secret Service agents to protect him. <laughs> And he just mixes with the, <laughs> the plumbers and the, the bar drinkers. I mean, that's the image that the system wants to portray, right? But the reality is, is this prick's over in Israel, sucking on a wall. Over in London, sucking on the Queen of England's feet like some kind of a lap dog. And just because he do, does it without any tact or civility doesn't mean he's not doing it. I think Donald Trump is like the retarded child of the upper class. So, uh, hmm. <laughs> He's got absolutely no manners, no tact for such a wealthy guy. He acts like a dumbass. So, in my, what I've realized is they found somebody to please the dumbass. <laughs> to... To look at a guy like that and know what we know about him and still admire him is the act of basically, you either have to be completely a dumbass or so sucked into politics that he's better than her, that game. And nah, that's not politics. Politics to me, would, what would politics to me be? How about what's best for all of us? Like uh, not putting... <laughs> Fluoride and arsenic in the water, GMOs in the food, glyphosate, all this other shit they're doing, the inoculations. <laughs> oh, crying out loud. Now that they've got states that are making, and I guess other countries too, but I'm in, I read English, so I usually end up reading about America. And they got states that want to make it mandatory. You can't put your kids in school. Without their up-to-date, mandatory freaking inoculations. Now, we've all discussed this till our eyes are blue. And pretty much the group that I'm agreeing with on this particular topic is the, uh, it's unproven, it's dangerous. They're just renaming poison to hide that it's a poison. And they're getting away with this shit legally, legally. They're not, without the enforcement, it's over. So they're relying on enforcement now. They're going to make you do this, depending on where you live. And I have yet to see any good come of it. But the logic seems to be, well, if you're inoculated, you won't get this illness. Okay, well, if you're inoculated, they just gave you the illness that you're not going to get. And your body is in some kind of freaking disaster mode because you got inoculated with it. Now it's going all ape shit because it's trying to fucking defend you from
from what you just had injected into your fucking body. <laughs> now, not a lot of people follow this. They don't see it the way I see this. But that's what I see. So the person that's at risk is not the guy that didn't get the injection until he or she gets around the one that did. Because the one that's carrying it is the one that got inoculated. You're chasing your tail looking for a, you know, a free ride. <laughs> it ain't going to work that way. Disease. Um, and, and then this measles thing. Measles is a freaking child's disease. 101 fever for a little bit and some red spots. And everybody laughs at you because you look stupid. And then they heal and you 10 days later and you're back to normal. And this is what, what they're making all this big deal about. But they added rubella <laughs> and mumps. There's another one, a childhood disease, mumps. I didn't even get mumps. I didn't even get measles. But I was one of those kids that was raised outside playing and getting dirty and doing shit. So maybe it's a result of uh, not, not being pampered so much that every little fucking thing made me ill. <laughs> I don't know. But what I can read of life today, um, the people have been over the years, oh, don't let your kids do this. They had that bacterial fucking hand cleaners. Like, constantly be cleaning your freaking hands. Well, no, that doesn't make sense either because, you know, there's a balance to nature. And if you're going to get sick, it's going to be because you're weak, not because you're strong. <laughs> So, so they found a shortcut with inoculation. So if you are strong, they'll get you sick. Now here's, I think, uh, this is where I'm going with it. If they give you the inoculation and you're weak, and now you're weak and you've got the illness, I think those are the people that spread it on to other people. The stronger folk, the ones they inoculate, maybe they don't react to it so severely. But these severe reactions, well, look at the diet we got, you know, the shit that we eat that they sell us through government, you know, FDA approval. <laughs> they've shown you just about every uh, prepackaged food that you can buy has some cancer causing agent in it. Well, a couple of years ago, I heard some crazy guy talking about. There's a few cures for cancer, but the FDA will kill you if you say the word cure. Okay. So, what are they? <laughs> One of them turned out to be, well, there was a few of them. There was a B-17. It's in the, I believe, the apricot seed. Vinny might know. Vinny or Van Meter, Beetle. Somebody on the main feed, right? Frumpy. Grimner. Wow, there's a few chatters on the chatter today in the afternoon. Well, my evening, your afternoon kind of unusual but uh then you got baking soda cbd oil uh oh there's other plants there's lists i've seen them on the uh, minds.com i've been hanging out at the minds.com and there's a lot of there's a lot of variety you know different people from different walks the, the status the free thinker the, uh, right down to, we got a, an Australian guy, I, I read his shit sometimes, he's a, what do you call it, one of those na naf not NAFTA, one of those black, black hat people, uh, I can't think of the group they're in, but, anti yeah, they're against fascism, Antifa, I think it's Antifa, some like that, some crazy group, and the thing about the other crazy groups is if I ever sh should dare mention anarchy to these group-minded thinker people, they always think I'm in a group of anarchists when, no, I don't think uh, I physically have ever taken any action to speak out in the world about my anarchist state of mind outside of maybe on the radio. It's not appropriate in life, you know. You're not, you're not dealing with people that really understand what you're freaking saying in English. Be careful about in foreign countries, because then it gets even worse. <laughs> and I was, I was at the bar yesterday, just thanking myself that I've never gotten into an argument with anybody in any of the bar 
situations because I don't know what nobody's fucking saying, so I can't have my little itty bitty feelings hurt while I'm drinking. It doesn't matter. It's everything's a good laugh, and that worked out for me. <laughs> but can, I can see being back home and uh, hmm. apparently talking about the government in any honest fashion will bring you rain. And I was trying to tell Vinny, I sent him a link, but he was out on his uh, fishing expedition. SCOTUS just passed a ruling that the police can arrest you for filming them. I talked about it a couple times since um, the last week. Don't want to drive you two people too insane with this shit, but uh, I thought it would be important because Vinny had just spent a whole lot of time on the radio Hey, you need to do this. Get your cameras out. And this is how you talk to the cops. And then SCOTUS went in behind everybody's back. And they decided for you. <laughs> they sided with the rich one more time. And now you can't hold the cops accountable. If you try to film them, they can arrest you. Hmm. Well, I've yet to see what's going to come of this. Because as the months have gone by, YouTube has been dwindling and as they dwindle other places get a little busier but it seems to me that a lot of the unless it's really heavy mainstream and a lot of people are familiar with it the shit that gets erased along the way the smaller stuff like me nobody's going to notice that <laughs> so eventually there'll be like you know two choices google or twitter and they're both connected, so there won't be a choice. You just do what you can do, and that'll be that. The end of it, there won't your freedom, what you had left. Because you got to remember, we're living in a time of life where if a government threatens your personal freedoms, you're a victim of the very thing that was supposed to be afraid of you <laughs> now oh no the government found shortcuts loopholes good stories prohibitions you name it they'll tell you any freaking lie they can to weaken you so that you'll give in to them and let them be in charge and i've done as much of that as i'm willing to do I think is the way to put it. You know, I've played their paperwork games. Found it necessary to do that rather than crossing international borders without paperwork. And that just seemed kind of lame to me because I'm American. And there's not a lot of countries that would turn away America when I was traveling. You know, it was always welcome wherever I'd been. So, until the last 10 years, maybe, uh, hmm. Now I'm not traveling. I'm retired from all that shit. But still, the the last trip I had was grueling compared to the first couple trips I had. Because I came from the, uh, the 90s, the before TSA and all that, checking your shit. I went to England the first time from, I think it was L.A. It wasn't England. It was San Francisco. Hmm. No, I was in San Francisco the first time. After the earthquake. And uh, boom, you go down to the airport, you know, and you check in your shit, and you get on a plane, and you go. And then when I went the next time, I was in L.A. It was the same thing in the 90s. Went to the airport two hours before the plane leaves. You're supposed to check in your gear and get your seat and all that shit. And then boom, they load you up on a plane, and you go somewhere. And then after 9-11... Wow, you know what happened? TSA. I don't remember it before that. Maybe I was stoned or something and missed all the good stuff. But uh, what I noticed was TSA seems to hire the most awkward, unattractive people there are among us to ridicule, intimidate, and invade the people who have the funds to travel you know, and go where they want to go. It's like a, uh, hmm. it's like a public shaming. This take off your shoes, put your shit in this basket. But for ninety dollars, I think it's eighty or ninety dollars, you could bypass the searches at TSA if you pay their fee. 
and sign on their list. So, here we are. We're protected by this group of thugs that are do the most humiliating shit to people that obviously kids, you know, little kids and old women in wheelchairs, cripples. And they, they're just uh, violent, disgusting people that for some reason maybe they just think they'd fail as thieves so they'd rather work for the government. Which is what I believe government workers are. Is people that just didn't have the nut to go out there with a gun or maybe a baseball bat. Rob people. Hey, give me your fucking money or I'll beat you to death with this baseball bat. No, they didn't have that kind of ball. So they went, I think I'll hire in on government job. No guns. Don't have to carry a weapon. If people start acting up, you got five other people to come bail you out of it. Now... To me, not to everybody else, I get this big thing about weapons and bullies. To me, it's like, uh, wow, what an opportunity to be a piece of shit and get paid for it. So, to this day, I still have no, what, not any respect for that kind of shit. Oh, you got to water your garden uh, after, oh, you're going to listen to the show first. I'm not doing, saying anything exceptional today. Vinny, thanks a lot. Appreciate the attention. <laughs> Bamboo cane table, huh? Hmm. Post it on the wire, cause uh, that's the easiest place. Unless you post it on here, I can't. I can't seem to figure out a way to post pictures on the uh, RLM chat. But I can put them in wire. I didn't think of bothering. I did that with my dog today. So I did think of it, but I don't think of it often. I have a problem with my old memory. <laughs> No, Frumpy, it's cold speak free. I guess somebody didn't fix his uh, water well. So he's got to make arrangements. He His normal thing is not working. Now he's got to do it by hand. <laughs> yeah, Cowboy Tech, this is the uh, 20% off podcast. Do it on 2 o'clock on the East Coast, so that's noon. Uh, yeah, no, it's 11 o'clock on the uh, West Coast for you because you're out there in Oregon. Yeah, I do the 20% off. I was trying to do links on this program, and I read a link, and it just was so really ugh, depressing that I decided, you know, I don't want to read these links. I thought I did, but I have this change of heart halfway through the middle, <laughs> and I went to something else, but... I have other stuff. Maybe I should just see what I've got. Find me something to read. Well, no, not really. I've got something, but it's a link. I hope I don't open it while I'm live. That would be a lot of fun. Mm, there it goes. Yeah, Hi. ah, see, I knew it. And it opens with a big, loud hello. But this is what people think of uh, <clears throat> state-run education in America now. There's lots of links about this stuff, as well as the police. And I'm not just talking about, oh, the cops are running around shooting everybody like a bunch of crazy people. I mean that the uh, the SCOTUS keeps ruling in the favor of not the people. Whoever the stuff the police do, uh, whoever it supports, like uh, asset forfeiture, for example, traffic tickets, the things that generate their freaking income. You know, I guess they got quotas they got to fill. Can you imagine that? And what do they do? So they got a quota. I got 19. I need 20. You're doing one mile over the speed limit. I think I'll pull you over. And, oh, look at this. You got a broken tail light. Holy shit. What? Do I smell marijuana in your breath? <laughs> and then, you know, there you go. But this is how I see where I came from. Not how how it was once upon a time. Sadly, you know, because they tell oh, you live in La La Land. Well, I grew up in La La Land. La La Land was changing into control and, you know, vibrate land. <laughs> As I was growing up, the changes were all coming. So they were so subtle. You know, even if you saw them and you could tell other people what was going on around you, you looked like a dumb nut job because... 
it was so slow. They did it in little, tiny, tiny little measures over long periods of time. Change the law, and then tell, 10 years go by. And then you tell people, oh, we changed this law a long time ago. But we haven't prosecuted it yet, but we're going to. So if you don't send your children to that public school, guess who we're coming after? <laughs> That's right. A law making it illegal to not send your own children to the state-sponsored school system. Wow. How'd they pull that off? They actually made laws about this, right? Now, how can you say they're speaking for the people when they don't? And if you ask them if they ever pay attention to any of the shit we say to them, what do you think? If you haven't been paying attention, the answer will surprise you. They do not listen to public opinion. Yeah, you think I'm making this up? No. The Senate, the Congress... These people do what they're paid to do by the people that support their campaigns. It is called lobbying. Lobbying. Children, what is lobbying? <laughs> lobbying is bribing your seated politician to perform a service for a fee. And, you know, right in the beginning when they started this America crap in the, in the start, back in the 1700s, they were clear on paper about it. We will not pay the sitting government members but a stipend. Because <clears throat> if they get too comfortable and make politics a career, there goes the whole fucking game. And here we are, 2019. Guess what we're doing? Are you sitting down, people? <laughs> Has anybody noticed that the government of wherever you're at runs you? And what? <clears throat> Now, the only good thing I can say about where I'm at is these people don't pretend there's any fucking freedom. It's a monarchy. You know, I'm visiting a monarchy. So, hmm. but the odd part about it is the restrictions are very simple. I mean, I think it's just a matter of behaving yourself in a fashion that doesn't incite negative, whatever that would be. You have to really go pretty far because 2020, you know, 2019 and people are, are, you know, they're busy with their cell phones and they got their own shit going on. So for them to pay attention to you, you'd have to be setting yourself on fire, throwing up or bleeding. Otherwise, who's going to notice anybody else in this electronic, you know, tap, tap, tap on the phone world we're in? Because at some point you got to have a phone or a card, or a thing, some external thing. Without it, no society. <sighs> so, because, and we'd be in the same boat in America we're in here. It just circs not as comfortable about living amongst my people as I am about living amongst hers. And she's even, yeah, well, well, I'm not too crazy about the South Denmark. It's the people down there behave a little differently than the North. And whenever you have a small island country of this kind, I suppose, these little islands, well, people are different on island living than big, you know, places where you can put 80 million folks and they're all plenty of room and all that. I... I don't know. Anyway, lost my train, just derailed. I got <laughs> I got five things hit me all at one time. Ah. Now Grimner's on. I love the teacher. Calls him saying that there are only two genders. An opinion. What the fuck? Wow. An opinion about... No. <laughs> no, th there is only two genders. And then there's preferences after that but all this crap about um, <clears throat> being the wrong gender in the wrong body now I, I guess it's possible let's let's not because there's seven billion people on earth but you know for something that unusual to the common guy or gal 
doesn't require all the attention it gets. That's what I'm I'm about. You know, it's like what's important in life is not you know who fucks a carrot or who fucks a turnip. They're still vegetable fuckers. You know, and until there's a law, <laughs> then there's no crime. Of course, what the modern day mind doesn't understand about law is if there's no victim, there is no crime. So what we've done with words is make things that don't have a victim a victim. Well, we'll just identify them as victims for the sake of making this here money off this illegal extortion racket called law. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but we got, they catch murderers, and they catch this, and bank robbers, and crap like that. Yeah, sure they do. I, I'm i starting to not believe any of the shit that I see on these uh, TV shows. Hmm, starting. <laughs> well, I didn't, I started not two years ago, and the, just the older I get, and the more visual proof I get of opposition to the official story, uh, Boy, this, it's harder to believe the lies as I grow older than it was when I was younger. My favorite is the Charlie Manson thing. And I've tried to explain it without physical reference. And I go off memory and I, I always butcher the details. But I made a reference a couple of weeks ago. might have been on the dark table about it. And I was thinking about the photographs that they took, you know, and the, the stuff that I saw. And they had, at the inside of that house where they found the bodies looked like a, a rummage sale. And this is a big wigs, freaking, you know, millionaire lifestyle guy's house. And the furnishings looked like they got it out of a, a junkyard. So, hmm, I got kind of interested in that. But, and then other, other details about it, like the pictures of... Uh, people bringing out bodies on a gurney and they were wearing suits. And I thought, well, where's the uniform people that do that? They got coroners for that specific job. But on this one particular case, no, they're not going to use the coroner. They're going to use the detective. Why? My mind goes right to they're hiding something they don't want everybody to see or they don't want people in the business to know. They're keeping this stuff all between themselves. And they're showing us what they want us to know. And then I met Mr. Charlie Manson on the, uh, you know, interwebs and the news and all the stuff over the years. And I'm telling you, I wouldn't have sat down and listened to the guy talk if that's what he talked like. Didn't seem like any kind of leader of anything to me. So, over the years, I've just began to wonder more and more on the side of, Maybe these people are all actors and uh, they did their little bit so that their families could be taken care of. And people laughed at that. But then I have done a lot of reading about personalities in, in that era, the 19, early 1970s. Most of the musicians that got killed or vanished or whatever you call what happened, I don't even know how to prove any of that. But Morrison would probably be my favorite. Now, Jim Morrison's father was an admiral in the United States Navy. <laughs> and John K. from Steppenwolf, his father, military too. And the thing they had in common beyond the military, the, both their fathers were supposedly linked to MK Ultra projects. And here they are, and their children just happen to grow up and fall into this music world where they're successful. <coughs> wow. Of course, all that had been set up over the 50s. You know, people had been s discovered playing music and made a record. And, oh, it's worldwide and all this shit. And every step that was taken, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, it just seems to all lead up, even some of Pink Floyd. It's just like it's, it's all a, a, a game to control us. Led Zeppelin, shit like that. The way uh, finance was handled... Because certain group managers, like what was this, Peter Green, Zeppelin's manager, supposedly single-handedly uh, put these musicians in this financial bracket that was like, wait a minute, these guys want to really make some money now. 
They were already making plenty of money. But now Peter Green had an idea. <laughs> and, you know, the public, being what it, what it is, doesn't know any better. And what we do is we trust the decision-making to a group of thieves and liars. It all comes out in the end. Oh, Hillary Dog, look what she did. Oh, Obama, look what he did. Oh, George Bush. And it's on and on. And everybody that's behind them, what a bunch of lying thieves they are. But the guy in power today, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's going to save us. And we play that fucking same lame game everywhere, over and over. Now, Canada's got Trudeau. <laughs> that's funny. France has got, what, Macron. <laughs> These... These are the leaders. These are people that think they're taking you somewhere. Well, where they're taking you ain't looking too good. I'm, I'm not impressed. Hmm. I can't really think of anybody that's sitting in a seat of power, control, decision, influence, that has or ever will make a decision that suits my interests. Hmm. Uh, well... Yeah, Beetle, because, you know, there I can now I can go back to that. I was running out of ideas there for a minute. But yeah, it is interesting. It was brought to my attention by other people who are skeptical about similar things. And then I started to notice a pattern about like a lot of serial killers over the history. We had uh, Herman Mudgett at the turn of the century in Chicago. He did the World's Fair. He was supposedly, he had this hotel that was a crematorium. and it, He had secret rooms and he murdered people for insurance and all of this, that, and the end. It took up a square block. And some reason or another, this place was taken down. They, they raised it. So removing any physical history that this man ever fucking existed at all. And then just relying, just like the Bible relying on this word, this book written by these people of stature that would not lie to you. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I wonder, because in the book about Herman Mudgett, the sheriff that actually catches him in the end and gets him uh, executed, I think they hung him, he hung him with with uh, misleading information about a murder he did not commit, but could not prove the murders he truly did commit. So he went to the lying to get him. And threw the information that would you know, prove he lied into the grave with his body, so they bury that with him. And, of course, life being what it is. <laughs> okay, so you got that. And I started to wonder, well, hmm. And then we go into the 1900s. Okay, and you've got Gacy. Same thing. Gacy was supposed to have murdered 30 odd kids in his and buried 30 people in their, under his house, right? After all this is said and done, and they go to court and they put him in prison and they guess they execute him. They raise his fucking property to the ground. You can't prove that it ever existed. So. That kind of mentality made me start looking more uh, sinisterly at older older public cases. You know, the Green River Killer. This guy is supposedly out there murdering strange prostitutes for years and years and years and years and years. Gets away with it till he's been doing it for like 25 or 30 years, right? Well, it strikes me as odd that you get all these other stories about politicians and you know the well-off doing rituals and drinking blood and Aleister Crowley and all that group and the things that they learned or don't learn and this that and the other I'm just saying they add so many doorways to look into that nobody has the time to pursue every freaking doorway and find out every detail so no matter where you go, you're only going to get so far with it. And then you're going to run out of, hey, where do you go to find out the next thing? That's been buried under something that you haven't even come to yet. It'd be like really proving the CIA killed Kennedy. I mean, the proof is there. I've seen it with my own eyes. Video links, explaining it, and naming people, and this, that, and the other. 
And no matter what they do or what they say now about something happened 50 years ago, it doesn't change what happened 50 years ago. So, what I guess what I'm getting at is, if they'll lie about even one thing to me, right? Now, this is my personal opinion. Not everybody else goes along with this kind of a theory. But if, if you're going to lie to me about that, hmm, what else could you be lying to me about? I don't want to live in that negative, I can't trust you, you're going to fuck me over for this and that kind of life. The, that brings the chaos of that kind of life. That's what I believe. A lot of people don't, but I think that you can uh, associate with another carbon-based life form in a matter of minutes. Come to a, a realization, a decision to your own self about the character of the other party. <laughs> uh, BTK, Zodiac, other fun killers. Prostitute disposal machine, says Frumpy. Well, I'm not saying that they're all faked or frauds. I'm just saying that some of the shit, really, Jeffrey fucking Dahmer story is the most asinine story I ever heard in my fucking life. I lived in a one-bedroom apartment in in uh, my teen years. And I'm telling you, one thing that you don't have in, in a building with one-bedroom apartments is any type of privacy. Saw so always some nosy, some nosy somebody, or maybe not even nosy. Maybe there's somebody that just likes looking at you when you walk by their apartment that will notice you coming in and out whenever you come in and out because that's what's got their attention. They want to see you, whatever. So here's this guy, and he's doing all this shit for all these, whatever, 18 months or something. The smell had to be beyond fucking, you, if, if you've never smelt death, in my opinion, there is nothing more uh, unforgettable. It's like skunk. You don't have to. You don't have to do that twice. If you don't learn your lesson the first time, you missed a class. But if you ever manage to enjoy the smell of skunk or death, they're too. They're, they're just. Un, you can't confuse it with anything else. Uh, and yet, here we are, we're living in this modern time where everybody's watching everything everybody else is doing, and here in the middle of this apartment building, this one guy is getting away with murder and keeping dead bodies on his property, or in his premises, whatever, and nobody notices, or, no. And the police, oh, every time they stopped him, he always talked his way out of it. No. Well, that's pretty convenient. It just strikes me as too perfect to explain the story that they're trying to tell you. So, you know, the detail, like 9-11. Oh, the, the jet fuel melted the steel. That fooled people that have no concept of what temperatures certain fuels burn at to melt certain objects. Okay. So, we're stuck in these loops of public education that has taught us a bunch of crap that's not real not true it's fake it's theory it's a lot of things but it's not provable you cannot prove these things are fact but we we live with them <laughs> we use them every day i'm telling you all i got to do to make my wife's eyes roll is just doubt the world is round just say it out loud just i doubt the world is round honey and i get that hmm, here we go again look but i accept that and I only do it as a giggle. You know, we never go to arguing about, oh, it's flat, oh, it's round, oh, it's square, oh, it's shaped like a, you know, a llama's dick. I don't really care about any of that shit. But the funny part about speaking or typing on, you know, on the Internet about any, oh, there we go, Grimner and Beetle. Have you ever smelled a burning human body? Uh, no. I've had the luxury of avoiding that luck so far, but I've smelt death, and boy, woo, yeah, the the rotten flesh, ooh, because we're so human and all that. But, hmm. but I, I I'm just using that as an example of how can people live that crowded together and always claim that they didn't notice anything. 
And the, the stuff that they didn't notice. Wow, how could you not notice that? Loud, drunken fag bringing home some guy that never leaves again. Oh, I think your neighbors have noticed. But we're living in this uh, media world where if, if it's in print, it's got some kind of magical power. It takes you to another level of reality because they wrote it down. You don't write things down unless it's true. <laughs> yeah, like the Constitution uh, or the Bill of Rights. Because <laughs> I'll change directions with this because I've read over the years in my little reading extravaganzas that uh, in America, your rights cannot be taken away from you, but you can surrender them. But they never defined you surrendering your right. So what they did was they figured out a way to surrender them for you. <laughs> and nobody said no. <laughs> I was there. I was in L.A. And I'm telling you, people would just look the other fucking way. Patriot Act, are you fucking kidding me? They're speed reading this in a freaking law. Yeah, come on, on TV like it's a game show. I don't buy into this crap. It's nonsense. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Oh, you think you're blah, blah, blah. All that crap. Way back then. Still, to this day. But, not where I'm living. Only on the interwebs. And I managed to get a few people. I mean, you know, it might be a terrible topic to think of, but it's very easy to uh, numb your mind with a lifetime of movies to see things in a certain way so they're not so devastating. Very common to see people getting killed on television. Why? Oh, it's a form of entertainment. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think doing it in physical reality would be entertaining. But for some reason, as long as it's just on film and it's not real, that's okay. Because I'm okay with film. That. See, my indoctrination and my numbing to uh, physical reality worked, because uh, apparently, but then on the other hand, in my physical life, I don't, I don't see people being violent and killing each other. It's just all in the TV set. It's just some story I'm being told. So maybe I'm still capable of separating the, you know, the, the real from the make believe. And how I mean that is, the real is what I can put my hands on and identify. And the make-believe is all these ideas on the internet about governments invading each other and price indexes and gold is worth so much. And all this shit's all wonderful and it's peachy. But not my game. It's, it's not what interests me. So, I guess life being what it is, it teams you up with other people if you allow it to and Cirque's okay with the, the finance thing she's good at what she does now if we were in America we'd be doing something different and it wouldn't be as reliable as what my wife does I'm not in finance but and then now I'm older so eh, I don't want to I don't want to do nothing no more I'm tired <laughs> then I got the uh, I got a few things to keep me busy, like Hannibal and the cat and the wife. The, the wife is easier to, to deal with than the animals sometimes. But, you know, I guess the her energy level is so high uh, that it either raises mine or my lack of energy kind of balances hers out. There's some, some kind of weird magnetic uh, vibration frequency thing to it. And I think those things are kind of subjective. There's probably a, a scientific way to explain it, too. But, you know, when you're alive and you're physical and you're doing shit, all that science stuff is fun to me, but not necessary to know it. Oh, well, I was. Should I continue? I could think of others. Too, Graham. Yeah, we'll keep them off by doing it. But it, it's just a way to, to uh, express how I feel about being lied to through the, the newspapers and the television 
because when you strip these things down and you take a better look at them, they don't seem to make any sense, right? And at the time, like when uh, uh, when Manson was on trial for murder in California, somebody snuck him in a newspaper into the courtroom, and they didn't search and check into everybody so badly back in 1969 and 70 like they do now. So when he stood up and he had a newspaper that said in black print that he was guilty, Nixon declares Manson guilty, <laughs> that should have got him a, a thrown out of court right there, retrial. You can't do these things. But Admiralty Court, which I would find out about 30 years later or so, 40 years later, whatever it was, it, it existed in those days. We just weren't told about these things. They were still, uh, some of the judges were still going through the motions of using the Constitution, depending on the charges. That much I remember from being arrested for having a concealed weapon in my, uh, in my early 20s because uh, just was riding my dad's trike and he had something on there. They figured out they could call it a weapon and arrest me, so they did. Simple as that. Opportunity for the police to make an easy kill, and they took it. And Admiralty Court being what it was back in those days, no evidence can't really go anywhere with it. And at the time when they woke me up to go to court, I just plead guilty to go home and get the fuck out of there. They gave me a fine, and I never paid it. So, they came and rearrested me for not paying it. And in the morning, I changed my freaking plea to not guilty because there was no evidence. After a period of time in the state of California, they destroy the evidence. <laughs> luck, I guess luck being with me is I, I had been told a few things that stuck and knew what to do and tell the lawyer what to tell him, you know, what I wanted him to do. And back in those days, they actually listened a little bit because nothing came of it. In the interest of justice, dismissed. Because they had the protocols and they had the rules. Nowadays, oh, these things are very different. Now, Vinny's the one that's been to court recently to see this in action. I'm going off memories from the 90s and the 80s when I was younger and, and participated in the state. Seems that once I made that decision, I was about 1998, to just, I'm done with this shit. Some, something shifted about me, my vibration, my residence, whatever the hell this is all about. And never since then have I ever once been harassed or detained or held by the law anywhere for any reason. I just have been left the fuck alone, except TSA. My only complaint is the little boy that seemed to be too interested in my parts. You know, I got off a plane to go right in. I just got searched to get on that plane. And I'm getting off the plane, and this idiot wants to search me again. I was like, wait a minute. What? What do you think you got here? And I was that was the day I was coming to, to uh, Copenhagen to meet Cirque. <laughs> and at the last moment, when I was being inconvenienced, I regained my composure and bit my tongue and didn't say anything so I would get jacked up and fuck up my uh, plan. And my plan was to go to Copenhagen. That was it. I had no idea I was going to do all this. <laughs> Oh, this happened. <laughs> I just made a left at Heathrow. And now, if you hate the patriarchy, give us back our electricity, says Grimner. I have no idea. Is that a, maybe it's a link I can read, because I'm just going off crazy about uh, how I feel about these uh, serial killer things. Ah, uh, the secret Republican plot to make liberals look like idiots known as Operation Just Let Them Speak, is working. zippity doo -dah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that on Minds earlier today. But I feel the same way about the uh, Republican Party. They're no better. I mean, my goodness, this Trump guy. I, I seen a twit, I think on uh, Minds yesterday or the day before. And I didn't understand what it was about. It was from Trump. And he mumbled, rambled, and something about five or six lines. And 
You know me and my limited education. I couldn't make heads or tails of what the POTUS faggy hands was trying to get across to us this time. But uh, one thing I don't know, but I can assume is that, uh, boy, he's going to go attack Iran. All the signs are there. They keep post posting this shit. The, the false flag shit came through with the uh, Japanese freighter. So the Americans are going to get their politicians pounding it into them that this is what happened. And the people that don't pursue it any further than CNN or Fox or whatever knowledge they use that supports that side of this fight, they're going to keep pounding these people until they just give in and Oh, but he, he can't do it without Congress. Congress can't do it without him. And in the meantime, while you're arguing about who can do it, it'll be getting done. And they'll deal with you in 50 years in freaking international court. Because, oh, there's another good topic. I keep reading how Hillary should be you know, imprisoned. Okay, well, how? Uh, who is going to go to the Clintons and do anything that the Clintons can't afford to remove. <laughs> mm. Oh, you didn't... Okay, Han said that. Oh, he was attributing my link to you. I don't understand half the stuff that goes on in life, Grim. I'm just so confused all the time. But... You know, it's because of my outside-of-the-box way of looking at what everybody... You show everybody the same thing. And then, you know, they look so far and that's it. Me, I some, some things just interest me beyond my own comprehension. I just keep trying to figure out, well, why does, uh, why does society insist on destroying history? And they do it in various ways. Pulling statues out of parks, rewriting books, book burnings... Uh, Changing the narrative on Wikipedia. You name it. These lying creeps out there that fuck everything up. They're with us. They're working. Hmm. And every time you turn around, it's something new. I mean, a new country that didn't exist then, all of a sudden it does exist. And then this old country, well, they'll just rename it. Because Iran once, once known as Persia. And then when the Americans started to go get involved in the regime changes in the 50s over there, then they changed it to Iran. Don't know why. I've never researched this. Maybe we got a nerd on the RLM that knows, but I don't know. And I'm not really saying that I know these things to be facts. I'm just saying that when I look at the narrative, you know, and then think about what people are humanly capable of doing I look around me and uh, how many of these guys that wander around the streets are capable of committing murder, you know, like monthly for 30 years and ne never being noticed? <coughs> I think something like that would stand out in a way that people would uh, know, like John Gacy, come on, how could you not see the original John Gacy and be creeped out by his appearance and behavior he was yeah he but yet see the press played him up as a successful contractor uh, he was a clown he did performances for children he was in democratic politics he even got as far as having his picture taken with mrs. peanut farmer uh, what was his name uh, hmm. Carter so but all the time, while he's doing all these wonderful things, he was in the uh, the this association and the that association. He was a big shot in his community, you know, and yet he's murdering young men and burying them under his house. Okay, well, hmm. from what I've seen of history and, and police and law enforcement, you really can't believe much of what they fucking tell you. I mean, crying out loud, what was his name? Uh, Al Capone. Here's another great story they got for us, right? Al Capone was a murderer. 
Stephen Scallywag that sold illegal, illegal, illegal liquor in Chicago. And apparently he was making a ton of freaking money hand over fist. He, he was even generous with it. Had soup lines for the poor and, you know, did things in the community to, to keep himself, you know, liked. But the government said, Mr. Capone, you're making too much money. What are we going to do about you? Can't prove anything else. So they made up a new law, income tax evasion. And guess what? The people bought it. And uh, <laughs> the weird part about Al Capone's story is I think he spent eight years in Alcatraz before they released him. Eight years, if I'm correct. But he died in Florida of syphilis. Hmm. Where did Mr. Capone get syphilis? Hmm. Could it have been in prison? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe he didn't die of that. Who, you know... So what I mean is you got all these stories and the only people that know what really happened in any living situation are the people that were there. Documents can be falsified. People can be bribed. Stories can be told. So, and there's so many of us and so many areas to look at. You know, you've got from serial killers to politicians to war to inventions, to energy, to the, uh, you name it, agriculture. There's just this uh, endless list of technologies and this, that, and the other. And here we are. <laughs> we get maybe 80 years on Earth if we're lucky. And you spend the first 60 of those pretty much, you know, trying to take care of the last 20. <laughs> and uh, then you croak. So in the, the last 20, I'm trying to have as much fun as I possibly can without hurting somebody else physically. You know, I've got my do's and don'ts list. You don't do these things. Very simple. But I'm a little loose with words. And I'm one of those people that don't think that you can be scarred for a lifetime over a mouthful of words. No, you can be molded and you can be guided, but you can make up your own mind and stop all that shit. A lot of people don't seem to be aware that the life they're living is their own choice. You ain't got, you know, the state might control us. Yeah, okay, only if you allow them to. And there's a lot of ways to not allow them to. They're just not popular. That's when the status comes in and gets out his shepherd hook and tries to bring you back in the fold for your own good because you're not doing what the shepherd wants you to do so you're being a bad little sheep and if you can see it any other way than that I can't and I've been on this trying to explain to people for hmm, a number of days that uh, anarchy and violence are opposite of each other <laughs> they're not even on the same page the last thing or a group oh there, there's that other thing there's this group of anarchists. No, what, what you have is like with the Jews. I love to tell this story, though. You have a group of people that have hijacked a name or a title or some identifying way and have rewritten the definition of that word to suit their self. And you'd think with you know all the military uh, false flags over lifetimes that we would just expect that other people would see the bullshit in the bullshit. But they don't. What they do is they justify the bullshit with more bullshit because well, you're not cracking my bullshit wheel, man. If my bullshit wheel cracks, ah, what would I do? I'd have to think for myself. I wouldn't have this great big group to protect me. And the same people that have that that expression about how they look at society. <laughs> they seem to be the ones that foresee the future as scavenging over the wasteland, searching for brains to eat because society's gone. And wait a minute, you know, how many years have we been hearing these dumbasses with their end of the world stories and 
oh, they're going to nuke us. And yeah, well, we nuked Japan twice in like a week. Yeah. Guess what, people? You know what's still there? Japan. You know why? Because it's a true the damage they can do but it, it's so blown out of proportion that you think that oh if they hit this place it's not even near you oh the winds will carry this stuff to us and da, 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 da. well you know with all the experimenting and shit that they've done over the years how come that hasn't already happened <laughs> so you know one more time we're being told, you know, partial truths. There are threats. There are bad governments. <laughs> All of them. Uh, there are obviously people in positions of power today that are truly out of their fucking minds. They have, uh, they have no connection to real life. It's disgusting. And it's come through in the, the abortion shit, you know. Uh, freedom of choice and rights and I'll put all that fucking aside you know and think think like a normal person whatever that may or may not be and um killing is killing to some of us and to others of us uh it's incidental at this stage of life and that this that and the other then i started reading a little bit a couple years get back about energy and how hmm we're energy. Hmm. So that tilted my uh, personal belief on the subject, you know. But I'm not going to go out into the world and dictate what women do about shit they get themselves into. Uh, I'm beyond all that. But I still have my own personal belief system, you know, that guides me and my interactions. But that doesn't uh, put me in any kind of pedestal where. Just because I believe it doesn't mean you have to believe it. The thing that I find that we share, some of us, is how cheap the state has made life look to the people in the generations coming up behind us. Once upon a time, man, somebody was having a baby. That was the fucking greatest thing. Oh, she's pregnant. Oh, we're going to have a kid. And now it's, oh shit, I'm pregnant. What what time does the abortion clinic open? I got to go to work. What? <laughs> and it, and what, what people overlook in the guise of freedom and choice is you're murdering somebody because it's convenient for you most of the time. Well, and with that, I guess that goes back to all that uh, traditional... Uh, hmm man and woman kind of lifestyle that I come from. I don't come from the everybody fucks whatever they want and calls it whatever they want to call it. And it's open territory, you know. There's no rules to follow. Just do whatever the fuck you want. We'll deal with it when it happens. Oh, you want to, you want to be part turnip and part human? Sure. We got a lab for you. We're working on it. And instead of... Uh, whatever morality is supposed to be, which is so simple, don't do any harm. <laughs> but when you start making things common, marring your skin and piercings and all this extravagant ink that people have grown so accustomed to over the years, I remember I didn't even get any ink until I was in my 30s. So I just didn't see, didn't want to do it. I had an interest here and there, but nah, never enough to physically go through with it through my young years. So I waited till I was older. And even then, I've only had uh, two pieces of ink attached in my life. And oddly enough, my wife has a similar thing. Very minimal. And part of our ink is from the other one. Hey, I'm going to put my name on you. Ha <laughs> ha. Going to brand you like, <laughs> like chattel, baby. <laughs> Get your ass over here. So, I think... Being as we were so willing to do that when we hadn't been previously, you know, because we were both, of, you know, grown-ups when we met. And there wasn't like a list of names you had to cross off, sir, before you put mine on it, nor me. So we had this, hey, this idea. <laughs> and we did it. And then we thought, hey, well, let's please all the other people and not get in trouble for, you know, immigration shit and all that kind of crap. So we got married, and uh, 
Wow. Who knew it would last this long? I didn't, but it did. So, rather than looking for pitfalls, I just wake up and just take the day as it comes. And every day just seems like the one before it. And not in a repetitious, mundane way, but it was satisfying then. I think today will be just as good. <laughs> and the only thing that gets me down here is the weather. In the summer, it's a little extreme on the humidity. It rains a lot, but everything grows really good. We get good vegetables from our garden, and the you know, the, uh, the place is green. I I feel better in green than brown. And uh, eh. anyway, so let's see what have I got going on in the old brain besides the wife tonight. Mm. Because you know, accepting fiction as history. That's the way it's really done. Uh, and people are okay with that. They rewrite history books and they do all kinds of backwards, insane things to the public. And the public is so busy with, you know, uh, Game of Thrones or like me playing video games on the internet. I don't have the interest or the time to be bothered with, you know, political decisions for crying out loud. <laughs> No, actually, if I was uh, living where my voice mattered, I think I would stand up for the things that I believe in. But in life, in real physical life, I've never been in, in a situation where I was persecuted or repressed. <laughs> uh, people didn't hold me back from anything. Whatever I wanted to do... If, just be clear about what your intentions are and don't hurt anyone and we'll back you up all the way. And that's how I see life has gone, not uh, fighting for this and fighting. For, now, I had a fight with my brother and that ended the, the, that ended the communication until he's willing to give in and he's not, so we're not speaking. And, hmm, and that's my little brother, so I figure it like this, you know. I will hold everybody accountable, like Vinny says, in my own simple little way. I hold everybody accountable to the standard that I think I'm putting out there. And if they don't, i got to remember, it's me looking on them with my ideas. And I'm the one that thinks that Manson wasn't really a serial killer. <clears throat> but, you know, the perfect excuse to come down on the hippies and show the public how dangerous they were to initiate the war against drugs. That was really what that was about. Or could it just been a coincidence and, wow, they just happened to wander upon the most unbelievable explanation for uh, <laughs> witchy and, you know, blaming the Beatles and all this just crap that made absolutely no fucking sense and yet here we are we got Richard Nixon in the freaking White House leading the United States so it's kind of a believable you know yeah you can dupe these morons with a sh stupid story like that they don't have the technology to prove you wrong and probably never will but they didn't see the internet coming guarantee that hold on one second I can guarantee that in my way of looking at it. Maybe you can't. Maybe you think that this is all happenstance and life just happens. Random things take place and this, that, and the other. And I'm going with the uh, Larry Woods and the Rob Works theory of uh, resonance and vibration, frequency. These smaller things that we don't identify so good. Yeah, I, I don't think Manson did kill anyone. Uh, not at the not the this Manson the Tate LaBianca thing. I don't believe it. Then Vinny's in here. Uh, okay, Beetle says we will never know. Vinny says he didn't. Grimner says Manson never killed anyone. Flash, they never convicted him of murder. No, they convicted him of conspiracy. Uh, but how do you know? I mean, God, have you ever heard the guy talk? It's just. He makes me make sense, uh, at least sound like I do sometimes. I don't think I railroad people with jibber-jabber for attention. You know, I just might have a hard time explaining myself about a certain topic. 
But I reach out for some far-fetched shit, and I'm still not into uh, mind-controlling you with drugs and all that crap. Fucking nonsense. And how I mean it by crap and nonsense is strong people that are willing to commit murder as a thing, and especially women. I don't know. It's just hard to believe. To this day, it's just hard to believe that women could stab a pregnant woman to death. It, mm. Women are a lot less violent than us, especially back in the 60s. They hadn't, uh, they hadn't even cracked the bra thing yet. They were still pissing and moaning about, uh, what was that, um, banning the bra, not banning it, but uh, burning it. They were burning their freaking bras, freeing the girls, having fun. And then you got these three psycho bitches that all know Charlie that decided to do a mass murder. And then another one after that. Hmm. I don't know. I've still yet to see anything that convinces me. This is like the moon's moon landing. For some reason, I'm not sold. Other people, you may you get you're free to make up your mind about whatever you want, see it however you like. All I'm doing is throwing out, hey, this is just another way to look at it. Uh oh. Whoa, Rome's and Vinny and Beetle and Frumpy and Donna. <laughs> They're all chitter chattering it up, carrying on. But uh believe me, I know how strange it is for people to hear this because I'm the one that's saying it. And it's not like it's brand new out of me. It's just uh I've always been reluctant about who to speak these certain things to. And now I'm getting to the age where I don't give a flying fuck anymore about how ridiculous what I think looks. Because the story I got told to explain it, that's how I see that explanation as ridiculous. It did. Some things just don't make any sense the way that we're told that they happened. And it, see, And then it's not that some of this didn't happen. Just some of it did, some of it didn't, and I think that the players involved were, uh, I don't know, they were played somehow. Like, Gacy was supposedly uh, a convicted felon. He did 10 years in another state for sodomizing a kid. But here he is, years later, in business for himself. He's in politics and, you know, local community as a big, you know, as a good guy, as a stand in, in the society that he's a member of. Then it turns out, nah, he was a serial killer. He was butt raping a bunch of boys and killing them, burying them in his house. Whoops. We were wrong. Let's get rid of all the evidence and we'll just write a book about it. And 30 years from now, ah, Gacy will just be a bad joke about being a killer clown. I wonder about all those kids that he supposedly murdered maybe he didn't <laughs> i mean anything's possible in life is all i'm saying is why always go with the newspaper said the tv said when later on down the road almost everything that the tv or the newspaper said was directed by somebody above them to say it that way so hmm, no matter what the truth is you're only getting a part of it but am i blah blah blind ah Hey, Beetle. <laughs> I, I only do this out, of, you know, because I like to. I, I, I ain't trying to change your mind about what you believe. Just uh, taking the opportunity to voice my own bizarre way I look on the external. Because, uh, you know, when things that you look at, and like this gravity fucking thing, nobody in my life has ever explained to me what gravity is. They go, they, we got a theory. Okay. And then they, they show you this theory, and it's pages of scientific jibber-jabber that, to me, doesn't really explain anything. But when you go up to the second floor and you drop something to the ground, it falls. What's there to know? How does it work? <laughs> and, well, maybe they do know how it works, but the people that do know won't tell the rest of us. They just make shit up. To keep us stupid, believe in things that aren't true, so that we'll never actually progress and learn anything. Like, hey, 
we're a bunch of energy bouncing off each other thinking it's real. Because <laughs> that outlook makes you look even crazier. Well, I can see you. You can see me. I can taste this tea. You know, All these uh, things that we can speak and communicate, point at, show each other. Well, there you go. They're real. And then you go reading books that tell you, well, they're not real until you identify them. What? <laughs> yeah. Till you look at something, it's not even there. Wait a minute. <laughs> and each of us individually does this all for ourself. So they got all these, you know, educators to try to keep us numb and, and ignorant. And the way they do that is by poisoning the food and the water. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to let that one go by, did you? But, eh, Beetle was thinking out loud, and he says, we need some hit squads. Yeah, for these freaking uh, politicians. Maybe some freaking public hangings, you know? Hold these pricks accountable for what they fucking do to you. No, that's not how society works. Society bends over takes their pants down and says, please give me some of that big jukak right about here. And that's what we got. And now hey, even America is coming out and they're putting it on the internet for people to see. The dual citizenship holders in the Congress and the Senate of the United States. And I don't think the average Joe understands how that works. They're loyal to two countries at the same exact time. How do you work that out? How in the fuck can you be American and be for Israel simultaneously with your own consent? Huh? 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 How do you justify a thing like that? You would have to turn your back on the truth about Palestine completely for the last, however, it's been like a hundred years. <laughs> and, uh, not look at the original writings about what they were going to do or why they were going to do it. And just look at the story that the media told you about those poor Arabs stealing those Jews' land and not letting them have it back. When, no, the Jews were never fucking there to begin with. But you really got to do some reading. There's some maps, old maps from old, old maps. And they're on the internet. So, like I've been telling you, you can find the answer to suit your point of view if you look hard enough because somebody's been out there putting it on the internet now what I don't understand is what guides us to the information that we individually get to come up with our individual answer about what we're looking on as a group so hmm. I guess at this point in life the only thing that makes sense to me totally is it's all bullshit because wow if you're telling me the truth and all these horrible things are happening that doesn't make sense to me the truth does not reign in war and poverty and destruction and people being all fucking butthurt about the word she and all this crap you know uh, oh Christ you know like when when I was in town the other day having a beer out on the main road and uh there's two kids with their, I guess their mom, and the kids had uh, shaved heads, but the patch of skull hair that was left had paint on it. I don't know what, I can't remember the color. I think it was yellow. <laughs> and to me, that's just two kids being kids, cutting their hair goofy and putting paint in it. And, you know, what the, that, how can that possibly teach them anything besides, well, I had fun doing that, now what am I going to do? shouldn't leave a scar because they look funny as children now when you're when you're 60 and you're still doing it a recent survey indicates <laughs> you might have a problem with your communicating skills as a grown up but you know I, and this could last with some folks in their late 20s i would say it depends on how how young looking and feeling you stay, but most of that cosmetic stuff, you grow out of that by the time you're 30, I think. And that's it. But some people are so, you know, 
judgmental because I've been around other folk all my life that are judgmental and heard the horrible things they say about kids or other people that do these, these unacceptable things to, to have an appearance. Eh. All that stuff's all temporary anyway, if you're lucky enough to grow up. So I think that leave them alone. Let them be colorful or exotic for a few minutes. They'll either grow to like it or they won't. And encouraging, wow, that's that's kind of hard to explain. I don't know what encouraging other people to do anything is. Uh, for me, it's I don't I don't think I do. Well, I encourage other people's um, podcasts on the radio. I'll give that. I, I mean, things that I like to do that I think are good for other folk. Yeah, I'd go with that. But personal appearances and you know how you look and what clothes you wear and all that horse shit that doesn't mean a fuck not to me but it does to uh others other people man and what they've done in my opinion like with this uh gay thing lately this rainbow shit they shoved it in your face in such a way that if you reject it just like obama Oh, you're some kind of control freak and you don't want people to be free. And I'm the kind of person that says, you know, if you go to bed at night <clears throat> with a chicken and a cat and a wife, that's on you, pal. Don't you don't have any right to tell me about it. You know, it, it's not my responsibility to be subjected, subjected to your personal, you know, weirdnesses. But that's not the world we're in anymore. The world we're in is trying to say, hey, I'm like this and you have to accept me. And if you don't accept me, there's something wrong with you. And they're calling that freedom and disguising freedom under more bullshit, you know, more control. Control through the uh, guise of freedom is what I'm calling this. Because... Personally, I don't care. I meet fags in town and all the time there's somebody gay in the grocery. Something like that comes up. But people, they're just in life. It's not like they're trying to get fucked in public and shit like that. They're just living. So as long as they're just doing what they're doing, how they are is none of my business. Just something I'll notice. Don't mock them. I don't bring any attention to them. So when they get in big groups and get all colorful and start getting the kids to act like girls and the boys to act like, I mean, the boys to act like girls and I don't know what they're doing to the girls. I guess they're just still fucking all of them. But they're trying to make this thing look like 10-year-olds should know about sex. And Are you out of your fucking mind? When I was 10 years old, I couldn't have described what hole I was peeing out of properly. I was 10 years old. I think I had important things like math tests and uh, baseball. What the fuck, you know? My buddies at school, and there was n there was no uh, no maturity about us. We were very innocent, just little ten year old boys. And now I read, wow! I look at this world and think, man, they're making these people grow up. They're not even old enough to know what the fuck they're talking about, and they're repeating grown up shit. And it's dangerous. I don't think any good will come of it dangerous. I mean, you're molding the way a human being thinks for the rest of their freaking life. And most of that, you do it in the first two years. But the stuff that comes along later molds you for society. You know, you take your, uh, your parents' first two years of what they taught you, and then you go to school after that. And then society just digs its freaking hook in you and makes you be what it wants you to be. And no matter how you fight it, there's no way around it. You get labeled no matter what road you walk down in this life. Other people dictate what you are. Hmm. I do it all the time because of my information. And I look at you and you, you express yourself in this fashion. So I look on it and I go, hey, you're a this or you're a that. And it's a nice idea to be able to get away from it. It's just so difficult to constantly be remembering, you know, I'm just like everybody else. Because, hey, part of me knows it and part of me thinks, ah, no, you're not. 
<laughs> You're a little different. Yeah, maybe here and there and this little detail and that little detail. But in the overall, you know, when push comes to shove, when the hurricane hits, people, that's when you find out what your friends and you know, are, are all about. And you'll find out that everybody that you encounter will treat you nicely. Because when you don't have that luxury of uh, <laughs> being an asshole because everything's all fucking cool and shit ain't cool and you have to be yourself, you find out you're not as much an asshole as you thought. <laughs> I've been through a couple of those times. And in the end, and the proof is in the pudding, and I'll, I'll use Cirque to explain that, because as rude, as insensitive, as much as I shoot off my pie hole with my weird ideas and my strange philosophies or whatever you interpret it as, I'm still nice enough of a person for Cirque to marry me. <laughs> so, you know, above it all, you know, beyond the words and the deciphering and the understanding and the likes and the dislikes, I know what I know and, you know, you guys know it too. So, if you don't, grab an internet site and start looking. The answers are in front of you for you to find. Just figure out the right question to ask. <laughs> That's the key to this for me. It wasn't so much the information that was available. It was asking the right question to get to the correct answer. And we live in this illusion, you know, bullshit-based life fucking world where everything's just about the opposite of what you see. So we're going to close up 20% with that there bit of wisdom. <laughs> and uh, I had a fun time fucking around with the serial killer thing. Now, I'm serious to some, you know, to what I was saying. And I'm not completely insane to the point of nobody got killed blah 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 what I'm saying is maybe these murders did happen but I have a very strong suspicion that the what happened and how it happened was misrepresented so what have we got coming up on the uh, real liberty media.com radio for you guys this week Tomorrow, I, I don't, Vinny, are you doing a show? Are you doing a ponder gander? Say yes or no on here when you hear that. And uh, I'll throw it in there for you. Otherwise, on Wednesday and Friday night, we got Gramsy and the Rocket Chair Podcast. Uh, please link. Wait, wait a minute. Beatles writing something. Let me try to read this. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There will be, uh, be a link. Grim will post it for me after. After he does all his post-production uh, stuff. Uh, okay. And my wife is doing the dog. We're helping the neighbor. Cirque's, we got a uh, neighbor that has a, a dog similar to Hannah, but he's a little heavier. Oh, thank you, Cowboy Tech. And uh, I was getting on to the thing. I get interrupted by my wife again. I am so footloose and fancy free with this um <laughs> radio stuff. I, I can't take it too damn seriously. I mean, the words are serious. But, you know, the protocols and all that doing everything right stuff. Ah, I leave that to the pros. But, Graham Z on Wednesday and Friday night on her Rocket Chair podcast at 7 o'clock on the East Coast. And on Friday night, Grimner and Moose Girl do the Freakers Ball at 11 p.m., and they do the stories of the week and such. But Grimner plays some music for everybody's musical tastes. <laughs> anyway, I'll be back on Saturday at noon with a dork table. Maybe with a hostage. Maybe a solo. I have no idea from show to show what's going on. So if you're looking for Mary, give it a shot on Saturday. She might be there. Sunday morning, we got Grimner opens up with some blues, plays the blues into the trivia game. I didn't play trivia this week. I backed off on the trivia, took a day off the internet, uh, the sites and whatnot, and just spent some time gaming and being alone with this with the wife. Oh yeah, Beetle. Uh, my yeah, my wife. Oh sorry, I didn't explain that properly. Uh, we have a neighbor that has a dog that. We've watched for them because they had to go out of town. So Hannah knows him. 
So when they walk, you know, when they, one of the dogs walk, they stop and they, the dogs meet. Well, the people need needed uh, the dog walk because they couldn't get home in time and Cirque was going to go by, so she said she'd do it. So that's what I meant by my wife was doing the dog. I didn't realize how, how insane that must have sounded. <laughs> so, sorry, Circle. I didn't mean it, honey. I was just a, a, a faux pas. Anyway, so we got a trivia. Then we got a Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, 3 o'clock on Sunday. He gets out his can of whoop ass and deals with all the crickets. And on Monday night, Seven o'clock on the East Coast. You got Grimner comes on with Grim leftovers, the topics and stuff he didn't get to, or sometimes stuff he finds. He's very creative with his uh, little <laughs> his Monday night epic sagas. I don't know what to call that show, but he calls it Grim leftovers. And then I did the craziest thing. I do my uh, my show I was doing with Vinny called In a Perfect World. Vinny's backed off, so I decided to do it at 8 o'clock in the morning in Denmark. That's my time, 8 a.m. Tuesday morning, which in America, if you're in the mid t- mid zone, that's a center- Grimm's time zone. I think that's 2 a.m. or it's 2 a.m. on the East Coast. I can't remember how the top of my head right now. I think it's 2 o'clock. And then Wednesday, Gramsci on the Rocket Chair podcast at 7 on the East Coast. And then Thursday at 2 p.m. in the East Coast, I come back and do this here, 20% off. So thanks a lot, everybody. I had a lot of fun with the serial killers and trying to read a link that didn't go anywhere. It was a fun show for me. I hope you had a giggle. Uh, Over and out.